I don't know, do your thing. Here we are. It is Saturday after work. Just had a full work day. What we're doing here is we're trying to brace the engine uh, to hold her up because we're going to be dropping the front subframe uh, for the KFD angle kit. Uh, we'll get into that a bit later. This video is to cover because we've been messing around. Let's turn on the flash with the Willwood dual caliper kit. Boy, was this a pain in the butt. So we got the supplied Willwood uh, brake, uh, hydraulic brake line. It uh, basically goes through the car. We use the existing, it's not fully done here yet, but as you can see that bracket for the rear seat, we literally took that out, drilled out the hole. This is gonna be in the hole, the little wear member, and then the, uh, the banjo fitting for the hydro brake, which is right over there. <clears throat> So the pain in the butt part was, this kit comes with two fittings, two 1 8 by 27 dash threes. So these, the Willwoods have stickers on the back of the calipers. They don't thread into here or here because there is no instructions for this, how to set it up. They say follow Willwoods instructions. You go on Willwood, there's no instructions, zero. Took me two days to figure this out and potentially almost ruin a caliper, but we managed, we managed to bring it back. So there's, two fittings one is a is an 11 mil and the other is a half inch uh standard size 12 point so i started with the 12 uh, the 11 mils threaded in here perfectly the wheel moves no problem see so there's a play there's no problem we go over to this side on the driver's side calipers are identical part numbers are the same nothing changes the line kit has one uh, one side that's longer on the driver's side and the passenger's a bit shorter. This fitting here, as you can see how nice it is, they included the, the half inch, so there's only two fittings, one bigger, one smaller. I ran with the bigger one here, and we didn't understand, and we spent three hours trying to figure out why this caliper, it, this wheel was just seized up completely. So the fitting was wrong that was in the kit that excessive manufacturing provided, so as you thread it in, this caliper piston would come out and press onto the rotor we didn't well i didn't notice that because we did a say a good solid like 11 12 hour day and then we only then did i start working on it so i was a little bit fatigued but still zero instructions for this whole excessive dual wheelwood caliper kit i deleted the back backing plate and the e-brake shoes because i don't need it i'm just going to drill a hole through the pin of the e-brake to use as a parking brake so it, it supplies pretty simply there's, this is the extended bolt that you use the existing caliper mount. Use the stock mount bolt here. No, this is one caliper mount, and then this is the other, and then that bolt here is the one that goes through the hub to support the bracket. Uh, so that was the biggest issue, is make sure you have the right fittings, because it's a, with the hydraulic fitting, it's supposed to taper down and seal. That, the other one that was included in the kit is just a straight thread, so you'll keep threading it until it basically bottoms out, the nut will bottom out on the caliper. But it's not the correct fitting. So I don't know whose fault that is, who packed the packaging. It is wrong from receiving the package out of the box. Uh, that was our biggest issue. We got them, they were like about $3 for two, two fittings at any kind of uh, hydraulic industrial store. Went there, now you can see we have tons of play, nothing's holding, so that is all assembled. When you get this, you're going to have bleeders on both sides because it doesn't know how you're going to mount. So you always have to have the air at the top side bleeder. You plug the bottom ones and the feed is in the back of the actual piston. So you put the little stopper bleeder stopper here. You have to take out these bleeders on both sides that are there. Same as the passenger side. And we got that mounted. So the way I ran the hydraulic brake line, I'll show you. Rolling under, this is all KFD, KFD everything, uh, even match the, the spindles to it. These are Siberian bushing, .ca bushings. Uh, diff's been repainted, welded. Uh, here we go. So this is the EVAP line, existing EVAP line. This runs, so there's the T, we use the T on the little plastic for the evap and then it runs see that little hole that's for one of the seat brackets but we ended up using the one 
a little bit more in the center it's right by the rubber hoses for the evap and so there's no wear here it's just a rubber hose which is perfect so it kind of helps and this is another rubber hose there for the evap you can honestly delete evap well depending how what kind of spec your car is so ran it through there and then we just have to make the bracket for the hydro brake and it's good to go so it's a pretty straightforward kit the passenger side passenger side line is a uh, shorter this line is longer um, and then that's about covers the whole rear end I don't know if I remember anything else I will make more videos but this is how the underneath looks as of right now and then we're going to be doing the front now and basically we're all, the cars gonna be basically done so yeah that's it got the front all tied up powder coated new brace new front subframe powder coated new ball joints steering rack boots steering rack bushings uh front spindles new hubs upper control arms full angle kit all courtesy of kfd uh and then yeah i'm going to be slowly putting this whole angle kit together on the spindles upper control arms going to the car we're going to be swapping out the subframe once that's in should be easy peasy go uh everything should come together easily and that's where we sit so we're hanging up the motor because we're going to be taking out the subframe the subframe holds the engine mounts so that's why we're doing this and that's it we could really start worrying about the fun stuff so roadblock number one ball joint they specifically say use oem because of this little bulge is supposed to be flat this little bulge is supposed to fit where's the tie rod okay here boom boom into the threads fits like that i have to press the dowels in and they're supposed to sit flush but i think i'm gonna have to grind them down just a little bit for them to fit um so that's one issue second issue no instructions so i assume or i am putting them together like this they pop in like so with the caster correctors and the new knuckles the oh i wish i had a third hand these bolts here that are provided here, I'll, I'll run them in. The second issue I'm having here is this is receded in. It's perfect. It gives you the clearance you need. This one on this hand protrudes. And they're purposely made this way. As you can see, this goes deeper. Or sorry, this is the shallow side and this is the deeper side. So this side sits flush as you're looking at this. And this side here is right here. It's not machined as deep. The only two bolts they include is these little tiny guys, which I assume hold the ball joint in because they just thread in there. And that's what's going to hold your ball joint like so. Oh, other way. They're going to hold them there. I have messaged them. They're sleeping because of the time difference. Uh, I don't know. My course of action here is I'm going to take a grinder and just literally trim down the head a little bit just so it's flush with this and it doesn't get in the way of the ball joint because the ball joint fitment is already going to be fun to mess with. Uh, I don't know. I'm saying this for the fourth time. No instructions. Website, nothing has this. You go on, all they show you is how to put this one onto the knuckle with the two bolts and call it a day. So it's not even broken English translated stuff. This is just, here you go, figure it out. So that's my update. We're going to go further and put it together and see what's going on. The subframe is all slowly apart. All the hubs are out. Everything's loose. Uh, the bracket stays in because it doesn't come with a new one for the lower control arms. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so what we're doing here is we're pressing out the bushings for the steering rack. Super simple to do. This one is just literally go, just gets put on the bar and you put the little clamp over it. These ones here, super simple to do. Just heat right here in the bottom until they start smoking. 
and then just use an air hammer or even like a pick put it right through the center and just give it a good couple whacks and they just pop right out and then to press them in we're just gonna use a lot of grease and a c-clamp and put them in bolt them right back into place into the new subframe over there and that's about it so just doing little updates bit by bit for anyone that has questions and stuff this is all information and questions I had so I figured I'll document all of this here we are running in the racking steering rack bushings literally c-clamp brake pad to bring them in once it's basically seated we're just going to put a socket and it's just going to pop right in so that's it we pushed it in put a socket on it it popped literally these little lips just popped right out put grease in the little sleeve and grease on the bushing and that's it it literally just pops in and then when it's there get a little pick with a little hammer a little chisel just bang bang and you'll just see it pop right out and that's it first steering rack bushing done i'm going to do the same thing on the second one and i'll make another video uh for that one but it's very straightforward as you can see it literally is cut just put it on put the bracket over it it's done so one two three and then the bench grinder four tools to modify don't do this Just try and tap it out there you go brass hammer so this is the inside of the grease nipple this one side is cut the dowels are trimmed down and the ball joint basically i put it up and i marked with white paint marker where they interfere with these little lower lips so you see the clearance i have now once once you just pop them in you gotta tap them in they go in perfectly this bolt i had to trim down quite a bit to get it to fit so now that this lines up correctly and it it's all good take a dremel go in here and get them out i'm using the 555 ball joints three five so triple five made in japan these are basically oem spec but not lexus oem time to assemble the right side they're labeled left or sorry right left on to the next one figured i'll mention this the subframe is out we got both bushings in this one super simple we'll put it in later um the new subframe is here powder coated uh so there it is it's literally the same subframe just clean but sandblasted powder coated that's what it used to look like inside before uh robbie's putting this one up there's the two bolts for the ball joints i mean for the engine mounts are there and everything else will start to assemble basically as we took it apart just with new components another video moment so have the top out it's an m11 by 1.25 if you look into here that is powder coat paint in the threads that is not gonna work I tried to run a bolt in, did not work. So look, that's how the thread should be. So here, this is what happened to my bolt. I just caught it right at the beginning there. I'm gonna have to clean this up, chase it. So this is where we sit now. I basically spent all my time. Uh, so what we, what we did was this is an M12 bolt, not an M11. M12 by 1.25. Big, big disclaimer here. The kit that we have is a Mastercraft kit, basically Harbor Freight, Napa, whatever equivalent. Um, this is an M12 by 1.25 thread pitch. We had a, an M11 1.25, so it was enough to clean off the paint off the threads, but these would not go in hand tight. So basically, a lot of lube or uh, the, the, the film, spray it, go in until it gets tight, do about a half a turn, back off all the way, spray the bolt, clean the, clean the sh uh, metal sh shrapnel, whatever off, spray it in the threads here, and then go back in, 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 tight, tight. As soon as it gets tight, half a turn, back out, spray it. It took almost like a good portion of like 45 minutes or maybe an hour just to do four bolts. So 
This one was already assembled, so much harder to do in the vise. This was much easier. Do this before you even go to install anything. So, as you can see, they're pretty flush. This one's are I didn't tighten torque it yet, but I just want to show you. This is how the bolts should be going in. So I have my blue Loctite on it. Goes in. And should be like that. If your threads are not like this, you have paint in there. There we go. Bottomed out. Now I'm going to just torque it up and call it a day. That's it. So now I'm going to assemble this spindle and go from there. There we go. Clean them out. That will cause you to miss thread and kill your threads if you leave shrapnel in there. Blow it out. So I tried fitting it. It doesn't want to fit. I have to trim up the dowels. Well, not trim because I, I, gr I grinded them down. I have to put a little taper onto it. By taper, I mean just get the edge, bevel the edge. So it is I'm literally updating you everything. So that way you're not like me stuck with no videos, no instructions, no nothing. Nothing. We've been here, we've had a full day. Car is almost literally all put together. Except this. This is the hardest freaking part. No instructions. Please come on, focus. There. Nothing too crazy, but you can definitely see it's a little worn down. So now I'm going to clean them up, spray them off with some brake clean, let them dry. We'll blow dry them and then lock tight, zip up this ball joint, and spindles are done. I can't believe it took me f like three, four hours to do these. Unbelievable. No. Three hours probably. 1.5, 1.5, if not more, give or take. I would say four hours easy for just spindles. Upper control arms are in. Uh, upper ball joints in, not tight. See, it goes. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Excuse the noises. But there has three. Allen keys there that I have to tighten. Uh, I'm gonna just hand tighten them because we don't know how the alignment's gonna sit yet. Spindles in, new hubs in, uh, extended tie rod inners, outers are in, um, lower ball joints, the knuckle, caster correctors, everything bolts on together, pretty straightforward. This is what it's all gonna look like. You can see with the extended tie rods, you can see that camber that's already in there and that's maxed out like this is there's this will just add more camber throwing it in like this is gonna look wild so now we're gonna start assembling the rotor calipers and put the wheel on and call our night because we're basically there throw everything into a pile and deal with it another time <laughs> it's the weekend it has been one heck of a journey big respect and thank you to robbie for helping me with everything this man has been Anytime you need a hand, he's always ready to help. Hello, People hello. like that are very hard to find, man. Time is one thing you never get back in life, and this man is dedicating his time to me in this wonderful little shitbox of mine. So it's going to be a great season. Excited to bring out Robbie to the first event for him to see really what this uh, this little monster can do. It's going to be a big learning process, but it's going to be amazing. Great people, great times. Stay tuned for the finished product. Here it is. Everything's bolted up. Just greased the uh, the ball joint there. So this is what it looks like. It's all rough until we get the final alignment on. Caster correctors, ball joints, lower control arms extended, extended tie rod ends, uh, caster arms. So this is all clean. The brace for the body. Got it powder coated. We got new bushings for the sub uh, steering rack new sleeves or whatever you call them and that's it so this isn't the correct as you can see this is not in the neutral position this is in the neutral position i want to try turning this ah. so as i mentioned camber bolts are not the same this is neutral position this is neutral turn in this is all the way to the left so now let me show you what, with the camber adjustments, how much the turnout is here. <laughs> Holy crap. Holy. This is wild. Well, 
I'll tell you exactly once it's on the alignment machine, the exact angle of row, uh, rotation or angle of uh, steering angle. Now, let's just turn the other way. Wow, unbelievable, insane. It's definitely gonna be rubbing issues. This is gonna get deleted. Wow, so that's it. We can take everything apart, clean up, call it a day. Everything's good for the alignment. Just a few more things to button up on this car, bleed the hydro, but there's gonna be more to come. This is just the mechanical parts of it. So we just lowered the car and as you can see, they got cambered in quite a bit because we sat it down, it was really right in the fender. So I had them rolled, but it's not even nowhere near enough what I need. This is a, what do you call it, primed fender. So we pushed the camber all the way back on both sides now to tuck it in hopefully this will roll us to the alignment rack okay. let's see how this looks so that's the new camber now hopefully it clears so this is it sitting down stance kids ain't got nothing on this <laughs> holy Wow, I don't even know how much camber that is. Can you see through the, under the wheel? No, not yet, but damn, that is cambered. This is just to hopefully make it to the alignment rack, which is literally next unit over. Okay, <laughs> you wanna do a little quick, oh no. We're gonna have to put two by fours underneath because it's south. So this is lowered on two by four so the jack can get off. It's touching completely. This is gonna destroy fenders. Like, but it rolls. It's like stance boy stuff here now. It's rolling. How's the other side? Yeah. So, oh, this one's a little bit better. A little bit better. It's that. It's that camber bolt. I might have to turn it Monday. But yeah, that's. Yeah. Okay. We gotta pull that little pad out. All right, we'll deal with that off camera. But this, this is stupid angle or camber. Wow. So I am back. Uh, I was in the air and decided to pop by, but just look at this. <laughs> that camber is ridiculous. That is wild. So what I gotta do for tomorrow, cause it's, I don't think I'll have enough time, so that's why I'm doing it now, is I'm, um, gonna lift the coils I'm gonna probably add like two inches to it should be enough to drive so we'll see let's get her back on the hoist and get it lifted so let's see this is it so now the coils are at two inch and five eighths distance between the top collar and the shock body the caster correction needs to be applied because this is completely touching the back Little bumper stop there, so I'm gonna have to trim uh, the fenders. Well, this clears, but any kind of suspension is gonna tap. Uh, coming over to this side where it's not as rolled, as you can see, the rolling stops right here. Uh, it's sitting right on it almost. But when it, once you're in the car, it sits. So, this is what's stopping it here, and then uh, tomorrow, hopefully, we will be able to put it on an alignment rack, fix the Alignment pushed the wheels a bit forward with the caster, and that's that. So it rolls straight back, but it's going to be a lot of turning to get this going. So that's it. So this is the new setup. I came in here early, took off the fenders because uh, there's the clearance issues. Took out the little bump stops. So thing here I just cut it hammered it in I gotta do that better and I'm running out of time all the guys are here so I'm literally rushing this is the angle here do the same thing here cut it banged it I gotta do a lot of a little bit of body work touch-ups but this is how I'll get her driving onto the alignment today it's the best I can do <sighs> It's literally 8.40 a.m. I've been, I came here yesterday at like 8 p.m. Sunday, left at 11. 
this is where I sit. Next alignment tonight, and I think it's that's it for today for the week. Off to Cali. We're back on the day continues. It's like 5:30 p.m. We got we're getting her on the alignment rack. You can see the front. Oh, yeah, I took off the fenders because, as you saw in the last clip, this car was not drivable. I took these off, cut this, hammered it in. I'm gonna have to do some adjustments, but I literally fly out Wednesday morning at 4 a.m. So I have basically today to get the alignment set and then park the car. And then when I'm back, then we'll deal with it. So that's it.